Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway, bringing you God's Word on matters of faith through Graphic Online. And these are principles, time-tested principles from the Word. And of course, I don't look at God's Word through traditional eyeglasses. I look at them and I, I, I investigate God's Word. So you see me going on journeys of investigation with you. And um, looking at Scripture through various eyeglasses, through various um, telescopes of life and there's, there are some scriptures that just speak out when I read them I get excited truthfully I must honestly tell you anytime I'm reading the Bible I get excited because I see things in the Bible that just blows my mind and sometimes even on one portion of scripture I could be there for ages just one line and many many things are coming through why because there is a river whose streams thereof one river but different streams so one scripture, but different strands of revelatory truth for us all. Now, I, I found something too that is very, very interesting. In the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verse 4. You remember when they were coming out of, out of Egypt and they were coming out of the wilderness? Now they were going to cross the Jordan. And as they were going to cross the Jordan, God gave some instructions. And I found those instructions very uh, intriguing, very, very interesting. When they're going to cross the Jordan, he said, first of all, I don't want anybody to cross. And, and that's one of the things. I don't want them to cross like the way they crossed when they were crossing the Red Sea. Remember, when they were crossing the Red Sea, they crossed as a mixed multitude. Of course, the Egyptians were coming. So, uh, 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 Ghanaians would say, uh, Ghan man would say, Abai. So, everybody ran for your dear life. You better cross because Charlie, some people are coming behind you. So when they were crossing the Red Sea, they crossed as a mixed multitude. And they crossed without order. They just crossed anyhow. But when they reached the Jordan and they were about to enter the promised land, as they were about to enter the place of destiny where God had wanted them to do, God said, I don't want you to cross like that. I want you to cross in order. And I began to say, what is this? Then God said, first of all, let the priest to bear the ark. Let the priest to bear the ark carry the ark and step into the Jordan River first. So let divinity go first. Let the ark go first. Let the priesthood, that is, let the men of God, let the people who carry the ark. And that's one of the things. Listen, follow people who carry the ark. Follow people who exalt God and not themselves. Follow people who exalt God's glory and not them. That's what he said. When you see the priests who bear the ark, that is what you follow. So God first gave to the Israelites and said, let the priests who bear the ark go first. Listen, if you follow men who exalt themselves, they ain't, they ain't taking you anywhere. You're going to become a tool for their prosperity. You're going to become a tool for their end. So you are just something they use to achieve something for themselves. But God said, follow the priesthood who bear the ark. I ain't going to tell you who to follow, but I'm going to tell you, follow the priesthood who carry the ark. And the ark is the glory of God. The ark is the word of God. And that's what it is. And the ark is life because that is where Aaron's rod was also put in. The rod that gave life, that came to life. The dead wood that came to life. That's what, in the ark, that's what it is. God said, follow those things. That's a, a, a message for another time. And we'll go into it later on deeply. But God said, when you see the priest who bear the ark, follow them. And then God gave an, very intriguing instructions. He said, let the priest who bear the ark, when they put their foot into the water, let everybody else count 2,000 cubits and let them follow. God was very specific. He said, give the, each people, give the, the, the distance between the priesthood and the people, let it be 2,000 cubits. So, number one, they crossed the Red Sea as a mixed multitude, 
But when they were crossing the Jordan, they crossed as an ordered multitude. God likes order. And wherever there's disorder, they can never reach the promise. But order puts you into the promise. Order takes you into places. Order takes you to places you have never been before. Order takes you into places you desire to go. Order, an ordered lifestyle, an ordered mentality. And God said, I don't want them to cross anyhow. I want them to cross in order. But here are the principles for me that are also very interesting. Let the priest who bear the ark count 2,000 cubits, then let others follow. Hmm. You know what God was saying? Let there be a gap of respect between the priesthood and the people. That means, let there be a gap in such a way that there is no familiarity. Sometimes familiarity breeds contempt. Because what you are overly familiar with, you can receive. And many people don't know this. What you are familiar with, you, will not, you can never receive from it. Let there be a gap of respect. You see, Jesus Christ went to Nazareth and he couldn't do more miracles there. He just did one or two miracles over there. Couldn't do a lot there. Why? Because of, there was no gap of respect. There was no, there was so, familiarity was so much. It's not this the carpenter's son. What you're overly familiar with, you can't receive from. What you're too familiar with, you can't receive. Because familiarity breeds contempt. And that's the, that's the problem with a lot of people. So always a gap of respect is important. God said, let those who carry their glory, let those who carry their ark, count 2,000 cubits. That gap of respect, when it is breached, nothing happens. No Jordan would open. And the reason why many people are stuck between blessing or destiny or miracles or destiny is because of the gap of respect. The gap of respect has been breached. Don't breach the gap of respect. Let the gap of respect be. Because what you respect, you attract. What you disrespect, you repel. So if you see Jesus and call him the carpenter's son, he will craft your coffin for you. But if you call him the son of God, he'll give you a miracle from above. Do not breach that gap. 2,000 cubits. And this goes for everyone. You, the priesthood, make sure the gap of respect is there. And you, the followers, also make sure the gap of respect is there. In so doing, our Jordans will dry up and will go on dry ground to the promised land. God bless you as you maintain gap of respect. So I was in London, and sometimes when you're going to climb the tube, the, you ask them, mind the gap. You hear, mind the gap. So I'd like to end here with mind the gap. God bless you. See you next time.